on the 26th of November 1942, 302 men, 188 women, 42 children, a total of 532 Jewish people from Norway were handed over to the SS by the Norwegian police under the direction of the Gestapo. The Jewish prisoners were transported from Pier 1 of the Oslo port to Stettin, today Szczecin in Poland. The prisoners were under the command of Untersturmfuhrer Klaus Grossmann and Oben Oberleutnant Manig. The men and women were housed in separate holes on the ship where basic sanitary conditions were lacking. After arriving in Stettin, the Norwegian Jews were transported from there by train to Auschwitz. 346 people were taken directly to the gas chambers. Only 186 men between the ages of 15 and 50 were classified as prisoners able to work and were not killed immediately. They were entered into the camp with the numbers from 79064 to 79249 and used for slave labour. Of this group of 186 people, only nine survived to liberation. The ship that transported these people from Norway to the Auschwitz death camp was the Donau. It was built by Deschimark at the Vulcan shipyard in Hamburg for the North German Lloyd in Bremen and completed in 1929. It was the last completed four-masted express freighter of the North German Lloyd. At 9,035 gross registered tons, it was a large ship for the time, and it was unusual amongst cargo ships for being powered by both a triple expansion steam engine and a steam turbine. On the outbreak of war, the Donau was requisitioned for military service by the German Navy in Hamburg and equipped with anti-aircraft weapons and depth charges. During this time, the ship was used to ferry troops and cargo in the Baltic, as well as between Stettin and Oslo and Oslo and occasionally Denmark. According to the protocol of the Vance Conference of the 20th of January 1942, there were 1,300 Jews living in Norway. However, due to refugees fleeing mainly from Germany, there was probably closer to 2,100 Jews in the country. Initially, they were largely left in peace, making up a tiny percentage of the overall population. But as from February 1942, on the instructions of Heinrich Felis, the ID cards of Jews were marked. Heinrich Felis was a lawyer who, as from November 1940, commanded the security police, Sicherheitspolizei, also known as SIPO, and security service, Sicherheitsdienst, SD in Norway. On the 13th of February 1941, Wilhelm Wagner was transferred to the SIPO and SD in Norway, where he headed Section 4B, that is the Gestapo Department of Jewish Freemasonry and Church Affairs. He had two people under him, SS Untersturmfuhrer Erhard Harry Böhm and SS Untersturmfuhrer Klaus Grossmann. In October 1941, he instructed the Norwegian Ministry of Police under Jonas Lee to make a systematic registration of Jews in Norway. This was carried out by an announcement from the Ministry of Police of the 20th of January 1942 that instructed that the identification cards belonging to Jewish people needed to state that they were Jewish. On the 23rd of October 1942, Wagner had a planning meeting with the leadership of the state police in Oslo. On the 25th of October 1942, Wilhelm Wagner ordered the arrest of a number of Jewish people who were then interned in a camp called Sundreberg near Turnsberg, which had been set up not only for Jews but also opponents of the quizzling Norwegian regime. Norwegian police inspector Knut Rød organized the arrest of Jewish men in and around Oslo on the 26th of October 1942 
and in the confiscation of Jewish property at the same time. According to the police's own report, Rudd worked without stopping from Sunday the 25th of October at 10 in the morning to Monday the 26th of October at 8 in the evening to complete the detention of the Jewish people in the Oslo area. Immediately afterwards, the Norwegian puppet government under Quisling passed a law to confiscate the property of the Jews in favour of the state treasury. A law on mandatory registration of the 17th of November 1942 defined who was to be considered a Jew. On the 19th and on the 20th of November 1942, the ship Monte Rosa took 46 Jewish people from Oslo to Denmark and from there the people were sent to Hamburg and then to Auschwitz. Only two survived. On the 24th of November 1942, Wagner attended a meeting with the chief of the Norwegian State Police, Carl Alfred Martinsen, and other senior police officials. At this meeting, the action against Norwegian Jews for the 25th and 26th of November 1942 was planned. On the 25th of November 1942, the arrest of Jewish women and children was ordered. People from this roundup were to find themselves on the SS Donau. The head of the Gestapo in Oslo, Helmut Reinhardt, sent the following telex to his opposite number in Stettin. For special reasons, I can only announce today that on the 26th of November 1942, a ship transfer port of about 700 to 900 male and female Jews of all ages will go from Oslo to Stettin. The crossing will likely take around three days. Since the ship is needed by the Navy immediately after its arrival in Stettin, I ask you to prepare for the disembarkation and the accommodation of the Jews immediately after their arrival. The Jews are to be brought to Auschwitz. Knut Röd had field authority for the police action on the 25th and 26th of November 1942. The operation was complex and had to be planned and executed at one day's notice. Under Martinson and Röd's command, lists of Jewish women, children, patients and elderly who were not yet arrested and detained were drawn up. Röd organised 100 squads each consisting of a police officer, a squad leader, and two assistants. The two assistants were typically members of the Norwegian equivalent of the SA, called the Heerd, assisted by the SS and other police officers. A taxi was requisitioned for each squad. Each squad was given a list of four addresses. The plan was that each member would arrest and detain a family and the taxi would take each family to the pier in turn. The first to be arrested were those Jews in hospitals, psychiatric institutions, nursing homes, etc. Although doctors often protested, seriously ill patients were transported to the pier and put on board the ship. At 4.30 in the morning, 100 taxis, half of the entire stock of taxis in the Oslo area, were parked outside the police station in the Majorstuen section of Oslo. Wagner and Knutre directed the transport of Jews out of the country on board the Donau on the 26th of November 1942. After this deportation, Wagner wanted to arrest and assemble as many Jews as possible for the next deportation. This was the planned for the 25th of February 1943 with the ship Gottenland. On the 25th of February 1943, a total of 158 Jewish prisoners were transferred from the Breitweid and Krini detention centres to the Gottenland, which was located in the port of Oslo. Of these, 71 were adult women, 63 adult men, and 24 were children born in 1924 or later. The loading took all day, so the ship did not leave Oslo until the morning after 5 o'clock. The Gestapo officer Klaus Grossmann led the German guard force on board the Gottenland during the transport. The voyage destination was Stettin in Germany, where the ship docked on the morning of the 27th of February. The prisoners were housed in freight cars and sent to the former Berlin Levitzowstrasse synagogue, 
which was then used for assembling German Jews for transports to death camps and the ghettos. Here they were forced to sign over all that they possessed to the German state, a rather pointless action as the Norwegian Quisling regime had already confiscated it. The Norwegians were then sent to Auschwitz. Upon arrival at Auschwitz, all males under 18 and over 45 and almost all the women were separated from the group. They were immediately sent to the gas chamber and murdered there. Only around 28 people were chosen not to be killed immediately. They were sent to Auschwitz III, the subcamp at Monowitzbohne, and used as slave labour. Only six of the 158 prisoners who boarded the Gottenland survived the war. In the trial against the former head of the Gestapo in Norway, Helmut Reinhardt, Wagner testified that the order for the deportation of the Norwegian Jews came from Berlin. According to Wagner, the order from Berlin went to Heinrich Felis and several meetings were held with Felis about it. The arrests were made by the Norwegian police with technical assistance from the German police. Wagner gave a verbal order to the Norwegian police via police chief Martinsen. Wagner said that he was present at the pier when the Donau transport was being prepared. He believed that it was the Norwegians themselves who wanted to get rid of the Jews and that Quisling, in particular, was a driving force. Indeed, it was supporters of the Norwegian fascist party, National Samling, which had been founded by Vidkun Quisling, amongst others, that demanded a radical and ultimate settlement to what they called the Jewish question, and their statistical office had obliged Jews to make declarations of their finances and possessions. However, there were individual police officers who warned Jews at risk of the waves of arrests, and although Jewish helpers were threatened with the death penalty as early as the 12th of October 1942, by the time that the arrests started en masse, then increasing numbers of non-Jewish Norwegians were assessing escapees. More than 1,000 Jews were smuggled into Sweden. Between 1940 and 1945, approximately 770 Jews were deported from Norway. Only 34 survived. In September 1943, the Monte Rosa was to be used for the deportation of Danish Jewish people. However, the German chief of sea transport at Aarhus in Denmark, together with Monte Rosa captain Heinrich Bertram, conspired to prevent this by falsely reporting serious engine trouble to the German High Command. This action may have contributed to the rescue of the Danish Jews. After the Second World War, the Monte Rosa was taken by the British and renamed Empire Windrush. On the 16th of January 1945, the Norwegian resistance placed 10 limpet mines 50 centimetres below the waterline along a 60 metre section of the Donau's port side whilst it was in Oslo Harbour. It was planned that the bombs should only detonate in the open sea after the Donau had left the Oslo Fjord. However, because the ship's departure was delayed on the morning of the 17th of January 1945, the bombs exploded while the Donau was only halfway down the fjord. The captain was thus able to manoeuvre the ship onto the beach as it had not yet reached deep waters. The wreck was towed to Bremerhaven seven years later and it was scrapped there, as a planned repair turned out to be too costly. At the end of the war, Heinrich Felis, who commanded the SIPO and SD in Norway, committed suicide. Wilhelm Wagner was arrested in May 1945. The case against him came before a court of appeal in August 1946, where he was sentenced to death. The sentence was appealed to the Supreme Court, which in a judgment of the 30th of April 1947, set the sentence at 20 years hard labour. He served his sentence in a forced labour camp in Norway. He was pardoned after a few years and deported from Norway in 1951. He settled in his hometown of Bad Gerdesberg, where he was employed as a bank clerk and later appeared as a prosecution witness in war crimes trials. Gestapo boss Wilhelm Reinhardt was sentenced to five years imprisonment for his involvement in the deportation of Norwegian Jews in 1967 in Baden-Baden. A subsequent trial in the Karlsruhe Regional Court acquitted him in 1970, 
because the facts could no longer be clearly reconstructed. In Norway, his acquittal was met with indignation. Head of the Norwegian Quisling Police, Carl Alfred Nikolai Martinsen, was shot dead by the Norwegian resistance on the 8th of February 1945. The Norwegian police officer, Knut Rød, was tried twice and exonerated, mainly due to the fact that he was working with the resistance and could not blow his cover. The Norwegian Quisling police minister, Jonas Lee, died on the 11th of May 1945. The cause of death was unknown, but a post-mortem revealed no evidence of suicide. Vidkun Quisling, head of the Norwegian puppet regime, was tried for treason, found guilty, and executed.